Good morning, chickadees. Welcome back to another day. So today for brunch, I am going to do a cottage cheese salmon bowl. It's inspired by Fox's Love Lemons recipe, which is in the description box. And basically, I'm just going to add a few things and use what I have here. So I have some Blue Hill Bay smoked salmon. That's my favorite. I have some 4% cottage cheese tomato, avocado, green onion. Her recipe calls for cucumber, but I had a look and my last couple of mini cucumbers are looking super, super sad and they're actually a little bit bitter. So I'm gonna put that in the chicken feed bucket and no cucumbers for me today. <laughs> I'm gonna season that with some tahine. This is their um, chamoy. This is probably one of my favorite hot sauces. And, a, and some homemade everything bagel. The recipe for this is also in the description box. And then the egg. So I'm gonna add an egg to it. And I've been playing around this morning trying to find the perfect way to do soft boiled eggs in the Instant Pot. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to do hard boiled eggs, but soft boiled eggs, it's a little bit more experimentation there. I think I have it down pat. So I have one egg that I've just taken out of the fridge and I'm going to be using this taller than normal egg rack. So your instant pot trivet, the legs are normally here and that puts your egg closer to the water. And of course, you'll have to play around. I've given a really good description in the description box about the things to take into consideration. There are some great links in there as well. But for me, I will show you what I figured out works in my specific uh, Chef IQ pot. Since I'm testing out the soft boiled egg timings this morning, and I'm sharing with the dogs, I thought I would share with Sephora. So I have a piece of just egg white for her. So she doesn't seem as sure about that one. Normally with stuff she'll sort of get it straight away. There we go. All right, we'll see what she thinks. All right, so in my pot liner, I have one cup of cold water, just, just straight out of the tap, cold. I have read people are using water out of their refrigerator so that it's cold. You could do that, I guess, if you needed to. And like I said, this sits much higher than the normal rack. So the timing that I'm going to use is what I figured out using this rack specifically. Why does it make a difference? The further the rack is from the water, uh, the more steam you get versus, you know, cooking it in sort of remnants of boiling water. Now, one of the things that I do want to test is you've probably seen the viral video about if you tap an egg on the fat end and it until it makes that sort of popping sound that it basically separates the membrane from the shell making it easier to peel and that would be fantastic because with the nerve damage in my hands the ends of my fingers are really really sensitive and trying to peel an eggshell is usually quite painful <laughs> That's why I know, normally I do them poached because I don't have to deal with it. But let's try this. So I have cold egg from the fridge, cold water in the pot. One cup to a six quart pot. All right, now let's try this tapping thing. I don't know how hard to tap, but it's obviously not hard enough that you wanna crack the egg. So let's see. Oh, okay, well that was, very, very quick that that cracked it in just or it sort of made it pop in just one and no fractures there. Now I'm just going to put that 
pointy side down in the center. And then from my tests doing it this morning, I am going to set this on low pressure for four minutes uh, with a quick release. And all of that's in the description box. There's also a link that talks about the different variables of things to consider and the different times that it might take uh, depending on how you want it done. So everything is in the description box for you today. All right, let me pop this in the pot and then I'm just going to prep the rest of my bowl ingredients. All right, my egg just finished and I've got that sitting in cold water. So I'm gonna do the rest of the bowl. Now, the easiest way for me to do this is I already have my toppings prepped except for the avocado because I found this really cute little cactus avocado cuber at Kroger for 92 cents. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's cute, let me try it. So I wanted to wait and try that with you guys. All right, my bowl is there and I have zeroed everything out. So I'm gonna start with uh, about 150 grams of cottage cheese. One half cup is about 113 grams. So I'm gonna do a little more than half a cup. I'm looking for somewhere close to 150. At 65, 108, all right, 143. That is plenty. Okay, now from here, if you wanna continue weighing, you can either zero it out and weigh each additional item that you add separately or you could, if you're good with math, you could just keep going. Because the way I track things, I'm going to break it down individually. So we have 143 grams of cottage cheese and I am going to zero that. And then in my smoked salmon, and this is just whatever was left in the package. And that comes to 29 grams. And then, let's see, some grape tomatoes. So I'll clear that. So 29 grams, 28 grams is an ounce. So this is basically an ounce of salmon. Tomato going to put here All right, and that is 44 grams of tomato I'm going to zero that okay let's see how this goes so basically you just want to match up the round end and the more narrow end and it says that you basically just push it straight down into it Okay, I can already say, because this is a small avocado, the cage is wider, and so it can't go all the way to the bottom, I think, unless I break the skin. So. <laughs> so this for me, for small avocados, is not particularly helpful. And then it says you basically just twist, which will cut it off the bottom, and then lift it out, which it did, and it should be nice cubed avo. So that came out really cleanly, and it worked well, but it would probably work much better on a larger one. Okay, so we're on zero grams. Let's see what we have in half of a small avocado. Okay, so 56 grams, that's two ounces of avocado. I just need to rinse my hands. <clears throat> Okay, 
Okay, so the only thing I have left to add is my egg, which I need to get out and peel, and I'm gonna put the scallion on top. So let's tidy up and then we'll do the egg. All right, let's see about this egg. So I had this four minutes on low pressure with a quick release, and then I just put it into the cold water. I didn't have any ice, so I just put just cold water. Now, I don't know if this, it doesn't feel any different, it doesn't look any different with that, you know, uh, popping the membrane air here at the end. So let's see, I'm gonna start by cracking it on the fatter end, and then the top, and then I'll just, now, yeah, this has a slight little raise in the middle, so I'll just do that on the table. Okay, so let's see. Now, eggs do normally have that little air pocket there, so that is, that feels the same as normal. say that this is possibly mildly easier. The shell still really hurts my hands. <clears throat> You're still not, or I, am still not getting a completely clean peel. <laughs> I asked, um, I looked on Google for if there was any truth to this, you know, easier to peel thing. And the general response is that uh, a lot of people said no. I can't say that I'm finding this any easier, but it is a soft boiled egg. So hard boiled eggs may be completely different, though I've never found them difficult to peel. Okay, so we've got it. It's definitely soft. Let me rinse this off and then we'll look at how done it is. It feels good. Okay. So let's see what we've got here. That side's pretty okay, so I'm gonna Cut opposite that. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I wanted the white done and the yolk runny is how I like it. So that is fantastic. Okay, got that back on zero. We're gonna add my green onions, spring onions, scallions whatever you want to call them. What do you guys call them? These, this size. Green onion, spring onion, scallion. Okay. So that is eight grams of onion. Then we're gonna do some homemade everything bagel seasoning. I'm aiming for about a gram. I'm gonna start with it over my eggs. Maybe put some on the salmon. Okay, so that is probably, that's less than a gram. I'm gonna track that as, let's say half a gram. And then the chamoy. shake. All right, and that is 10 grams of tahini. That will be my bowl.
welcome back for lunch so I'm just going to do a little sandwich and I have some fresh green grapes and then I'm going to do a sandwich on some of my favorite dark rye bread from Kroger and I'm actually just going to do some turkey pepperoni these are 70 calories for 16 slices and then I have one laughing cow wedge and I'm going to use two slices of the white American singles they are 60 calories a slice and that's it just a little sandwichy nibble lunch Hey guys, welcome back for dinner. All right, I don't know about you, but it is too hot here to want to turn on the stove or run the air fryer. So I wanted to do something else, no cook basically. And I decided to do some chicken nachos. So I have some Tostitos blue corn chips the uh, Simply Tostitos ones. And then I'm gonna use canned chicken breast. Just shred that up and season that. And then for my toppings, I have some grape tomatoes, red and yellow pepper, the other half of that avocado from this morning, some olives, and I'm going to make a cheese sauce using two wedges of Laughing Cow, a tablespoon of the Hoosier Hill Farm white cheddar powder with two tablespoons of water. So I'm going to mix that up first, then I'm going to add the Laughing Cow into it, and then I'm going to put it in the microwave for probably 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds, just to get everything soft, blend it together, and I'll have a cheese sauce. Oh, and I have some homemade pickled onions I'm going to put on there as well. And then topping wise, I have some Greek yogurt. I'm gonna use some more tahine, the chamoy that I used this morning. And I have some fresh cilantro. So that is going to be dinner. All right, so I have uh, half of that yellow bell pepper and the red one, seven avocado, avocados, <laughs> seven olives, the other half of the avocado, four of the grape tomatoes, my lime, then I have my chicken, pickled onion, cilantro, and I've weighed out my blue chips. And then I'm going to top that with the Greek yogurt and tahini. All right, final goodies of the night. So I found this yogurt. So this is not a Greek, this is a normal low fat yogurt. Kroger had it on special. <laughs> so I thought I would try this. It is 140 calories for two thirds of a cup or 170 grams. I'm gonna do about 150 grams. And then I have some gorgeous watermelon and the green seedless grapes, and I'm out of coconut. I normally like to put a bit of coconut in there, but I don't have any. I do have some cinnamon granola from Nature Valley, getting down to the little sparse parts there. And I think to make this look pretty, I'm gonna use some of my gel color. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'll do a purple with that. And then I'm also going to have some pomegranate molasses. Now that is quite a dark, almost brown color. Um, and it's not particularly pretty, <laughs> but I think everything else should be good. So again, this is another no cook. I don't need to do anything except weigh and put everything in the bowl and go from there. <laughs> 